Jesus told us that in this world we will have persecutions. But he has promised us during that time that we are part of the kingdom of God. During those times, we can have the peace of God ruling and reigning in our heart. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Today we live in a world of turmoil and strife, wars and rumors of wars, many things that are happening that could cause us to be distressed. But in the midst of all these things that are happening, we can have the peace of God deep down in our heart. Jesus talked about another kingdom, his kingdom. A kingdom was never going to end, but he's going to rule and reign forever and forever. When he was in Nazareth, after he had come from his baptism and temptation in the wilderness, he came back to Nazareth and there he opened up the scriptures and he began to read. He told us what his mission was, why he had come. He came that he might call us to repentance, that the poor might have the gospel preached to them. Let me read it to you from Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then when he came down here around the Sea of Galilee, and preached his Sermon on the Mount, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. This is why he continues and he says, We are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto us. Everything that we see in this world is only temporary. It is here and it is gone. But it's the invisible things that we cannot see that are going to last forever and forever. And I pray that God's peace will be your peace and you will be a part of the kingdom of God by being a peacemaker and reaching out to other individuals. How long are we supposed to do it? Until every tribe, every tongue, and every nation hears that Jesus is Lord and he is the one who has come that he might redeem us from our sins and give to us eternal life. And now here is Ari Bar David to tell us more about this wonderful teaching of Jesus. In a world of war, we can have peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the sons of God. I'm standing now on the ruins of Tel Kinerot. This is the place that somewhere around was the Mount of Beatitude. I'm pointing on the sea behind me. On the shores, this is where the boats landed, and from there the people climbed on the slope of Mount Beatitude. Actually, from here I can see everything. I see Gamla, Magdala, Arbel Cliffs, Horns of Chitin. Maybe it doesn't tell you a lot, these names, but it was very meaningful in the time of Yeshua, the time of Jesus. Now, I want to relate on the last thing that we have heard. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why? They will be called sons of God. So many times I've heard from young people, volunteers that comes to Israel, and they say to me, look, Arya, it's not fair to, to put the idealistic things of Jesus on our days. In Jesus' time, everything was so calm, so restful. All around was so peaceful. But we are living in hard generation, in hard temptations around us. How can you apply this to our days? And only then I really recognize how little people know about what was the political environment around Jesus. Let me say, in our history, the Jewish history, maybe the hardest time was the time when Jesus was here. We were oppressed under the Romans. The Romans were ru ruling very hard. They were ruling with their sword. 
with the law. And if you don't understand this, of course, they had the third one. Taxes and taxes and taxes. People were miserable under the load of the taxes. And that's why, and mainly here in this area, again and again, rebellion started. And in Jesus' time, we speak about 30 after his birth, all around us here were groups of rebellions. The most dangerous were called the Sikarik. Those who went here with a small, sharp knife, both direction, and they covered it with white ropes. And once they pointed somebody, which they called him a peacemaker, because in Jesus' time there was also a party that was called the peacemaker, the Sikarics, those who went with this knife, once they pointed him, he actually was considered a dead man. Now, what, what I want to say by this, when Jesus climbed up to the Mount of Beatitude and he was standing there under the trees, in front of his eyes, and that's what you see now in the camera, you could see the Arbel cliffs. What are these cliffs? In these cliffs there are hundreds of caves. And in these caves the Jewish rebellions again and again prepared rebellions against their enemies. Hosea chapter 10 verse 14 describes that the enemy that will come, it will be like Shalman in the day of Arbel, when he was killing mothers with babies in their, in their tomb, wombs. So this is the Arbel cliffs. When Herod arrived in the year 42 before Jesus, it was there in the Arbel cliffs that he was grabbing the people out of the caves, throw them down the cliffs. A lot of bloodshed was around. In Jesus' time, the rebellious families, leaders, mainly those of the family of Menachem, Yehuda, they came and they organized their army or their people to rebel against the Romans there in the cliffs of Arbel. Now imagine in front of the eyes of Jesus are standing these cliffs. In front of his eyes, so he's talking to the multitude which are under him. Did he know what is going to be in one generation? Of course he knew. Of course he knew the bloodshed that is going to be there in the Arbel. But it didn't relate in one word. What he said, blessed are the peacemaker, because they will be the son of God. And just moving his eye a little bit to the right, and you see in the horizon now, the horns of Chitin, this flat mountain. This was the place where later on, in the year 1099 after Jesus, the crusaders fell lost their last battle in this land. This is the end of the time of the Crusaders. Now, who were the Crusaders? They were those called Christians that came to the land of Israel to do what? To save the Holy Cross. How they did it? By passing through Europe. And whenever they passed the Jewish communication, Again and again, they were putting the people in the synagogue, the Jewish, of course, and they burned the synagogue with the people inside. In the name of whom? In the name of Jesus Christ. And what they blamed the Jews, you killed our God. Now, Jesus, looking down, seeing in front of him, of course, he knew what is going to be in the horns of Chitin. He knew that in his name, people will get a kind of permission to murder Jews. What a shame. But he didn't relate in a word. What he said, blessed are the peacemaker, because they will be called the son of God. And moving a little bit to the left, now you see the camera points on a place that once there was a city called Magdala, Migdal. 
Joseph would say that there were 40,000 people there. You know what was the end of these people? When they rebelled against the Romans, Titus, the son of Vespasian, almost found his death there in the city. And as a revenge, he commanded to kill everything that moves in this city. Joseph who speaks about 6,900 men, warriors, that were cut in pieces by the Romans. It was so terrible that the sea itself, of the, the color of the Sea of Galilee, of the water, become blood. When we look far away on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, it's very hazy, we cannot recognize there is a place called Gamla, Camel in English, because the structure, topographical structure of this place. 5,000 Jews threw themselves down, down from the cliffs. This, we call it also Masada of Galilee. This was the end of the rebellions and the rebellion that was here in Galilee. Look, Jesus saw all this in front of his eyes. But what does he say? Blessed are the peacemaker because they will be called the Son of God. This is my answer. Always, always, there were a lot of trouble and there will be trouble around us. But let us remember that Jesus promised us to give us his peace. And the moment we get his peace, we have to pass it on. This is the meaning of being a peacemaker. And once we have the peace of Yeshua in our heart, we don't have to be troubled of this terrible thing that happens around us. And again, when I give my testimony as a soldier in the army, mainly in the war of Yom Kippur, when hundreds of bullets were shot on me, actually on me, I was like in the middle of a beehive. No one could take the peace of the Lord from me. So look, only one word, blessed are the peacemaker, because they, they will be called the sons of God.